Back once again with Erica Brown of The Cricket. She's the publisher and editor of Manchester and Essex's favorite weekly newspaper. How are you, Erica? That's right. That's right. Nationally yeah. acclaimed. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Exactly. Award-winning, the award-winning Manchester Cricket. Um, hey guys, a um, lot of stuff going on, fun and then serious. So which yeah. one do we go first? Well, let's get serious right off the top because uh, there, there has been an ongoing mask mandate in the town and is that still happening or what? Yeah, there was a, um, there's a big meeting tonight with the BOS um, and they're the ones obviously the Board of Selectmen have to actually make decision and the binding decision. Um, so anything that's happened in the past, people point to the, the, the Board of Health, but it's really the Board of Selectmen that actually, you know, enforces and makes the rules official. So um, there's a big meeting tonight where they're going to essentially um, continue. They will continue the mask mandate. There was a meeting of the Board of Health and Board of Selectmen last Thursday morning where they discussed this. Now, this has been not without its controversy. Um, because Manchester was early and conservative in having a mandate that in any place that uh, of business that in which the public was accessible, so think stores, restaurants, but then also the Manchester Cricket actually, um, anything that's open to the public, organizations, and of course Town Hall and the rest of them would have masks not suggested and strongly recommended, which is what the state has gone with, but rather this would be an actual mandate. And there was a lot of controversy, particularly with restaurants, because restaurants are the ones that kind of suffering. Here's why. Because when you get into the, your car and you say, oh, honey, let's go out to dinner tonight. You literally have this micro decision that happens where you say, oh, wait a minute, you know, they have that mandate in, in uh, and the distancing in, in Manchester, let's go to Essex or let's go to Rockport or let's go to Gloucester because it's pretty much the same drive, but they don't have the, the mandate. So it put our restaurants at a disadvantage in Manchester. So that's sort of what's been happening. The BOH did it early and said, well, the Delta variant is going to be this. We need to gird ourselves. Um, and the Delta variant has the numbers have been extremely um, steady. They have we have very, very high vaccination rates and we're surrounded by towns that also have vaccination rates that are similar to ours. And as a result, we haven't had anything that's been any different than Essex or, you know, Rockport or any of the other or Beverly even like, you know, what I mean, like the, the, the kind of uh, trends are identical, even though they have different policies than us. Essex has a policy that in all federal buildings or any government buildings, so post office, town hall, et cetera, but that's it. Um, so there was a lot of attention around this idea of, um, you know, this meeting last Thursday, and they decided like two, two board of health meetings ago, that was three weeks ago, I attended that meeting as I did last Thursday as well. And Peter Colarusso, for instance, he was saying, and I try to zero in on what is the trigger that will enable them to say, okay, we'll relax the mask mandate, right? Is it a metric? Is it a number? Are we looking for a number? And that number could either be literal rates of infection and trends, or it could be percentages, a percentage downward or a percentage upward. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the other thing though is, and this is why I brought up Peter Colarusso, because he said something that really got my attention. He's a board of health member here in Essex. He's, I mean, in, here in Manchester. And he said, I don't want to lift the man mask mandate. And this is his board member position. It wasn't like a vote, but he said, I want to uh, do it when everyone's vaccinated. We have widespread vaccination rates. And that means everyone gets a booster and everybody under 12 gets a vaccine. That's the key, because I remember Fauci was saying that that, num that isn't going to happen. FDA approval isn't going to happen until, Heather, are you watching this? I'm watching, yeah. Right. Spring, right? Isn't yeah, that right, right, exactly, yeah. That's what they've been saying. So I literally said, what? You know, Are you advocating that we're going to have a mask mandate in Manchester until next June? Because that's literally what he was saying. And so I asked, and Martin Hahn, who is a, a physician, and he is also on the board of directors, he said, well, it's not going to be, it's going to be a combination of numbers and this. I said, okay, then what number? And he said, well, it's not going to be Manchester. It's going to be us looking at the numbers in Manchester relative to the surrounding towns. Now, the only other two towns, I believe, that have mass mandates is Salem has one. Mm. Salem has a big, they were girding themselves for Halloween, oh, right? Right, yeah, yes. absolutely, yeah like a different ecosystem down there in, in Salem. Right. And, and I don't want, I don't mean to editorialize, but Rockport's been really conservative and they don't have their mask mandate in place. 
So it's yeah, kind of interesting, right? A lot of people feel that way. The town nurse, um, Pam Crean was saying that she thinks that, you know, we should consider relaxing, but the B, but they, they are, they are holding tight. So this is what they're going to determine tonight. And this is where the teeth is, right? The teeth are, I guess that's plural. <laughs> um, how are you going to enforce it? Really? That's you all can we have a mandate, but let's see how you really feel about the mandate when you start to find businesses or ask businesses to enforce it. How is it going to be enforced? Is there going to be an officer? Is there going to be a person in town? Do you, how do they assess fees? Like literally they're going to send the police down to a gift shop because somebody reported no one was wearing a mask. You know, I, I, I think that that's where we're really going to see it. So there you go. That's the update. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. at the Jaho coffee shop in Salem, the people behind the counter enforce it. I, I walked in there and I didn't know there was a mandate. And they were like, excuse me, but we do have a mask mandate in Salem. She did it very nicely. It was very well. It was very polite. I felt like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. So I think I think that's exactly what they're going to expect. And that, that's the language that we're going to hear. To be honest with you, that's probably the BOS's hope. Right. It's their desperate hope that everyone will sort of do it. The problem will come if somebody is defiant, somebody doesn't want to do it, and they say, you know, no, I'm not going to do it. What are you going to do? And that's tough for the restaurants, that's for sure. Everyone's in a mask in Salem this time of year anyway. So there, it's easier for them, you know? Hey, let's talk about something just as ghoulish, Erica, the cardboard regatta. That's not ghoulish. That's just crazy. Oh, kind of ghoulish. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the writing on the front page. It was wild and crazy in the best possible way. <laughs> well, it looks awesome. Yeah, this is the um, 12th annual Manchester uh, uh, cardboard regatta. Uh, <laughs> cardboard box regatta. It's been going on. Obviously, this was the 12th year, although it was I, actually it's the 13th year because they didn't have it last time. So it's the 12th time in 13 years. But it was founded, this is one of those events, it's every year on Columbus Day weekend. So it really is for the brave, the brave of heart, because you know you see a lot of wetsuits in, in, the, in years past, because you never know what the weather's gonna be like in October. And let's not forget, you're engineering with a highly vulnerable material. <laughs> <laughs> Water-soluble material. We're talking cardboard <laughs> duct tape. I, <laughs> you're on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is a really fun event. It's the kind of event that is my personal favorite. Like you get people who are like, what are you into Christmas or uh, or the holidays, the winter holidays, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas, Hanukkah or um, or Thanksgiving. I'm a Thanksgiving person because I love a holiday where there's no obligation other than to have a good time. Yeah. Drink, eat, hang out with your friends. And that's it. There's no other obligation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the cardboard we got it. Is that's it's what the regatta, cardboard yeah. regatta is. The cardboard <laughs> regatta doesn't pretend to be anything other than a really hilarious, raucous, great time for all ages. And these people have just upped their games year after year. And now we've got costumes. We've got funny, hilarious names of the boats. We've got grudges. We've got this. We've got that. It's awesome. So mm -hmm. this year, um, we, here's some of the names. You want to hear some of the names of the boats? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sea Queen, I'll do the, the easy one. So it's Sea Queen, Little Boat, fire, Fireball, which is like a big one. My favorite of, of the one was Floats Like a Brick. <laughs> and it was like a brick wall, it's decorated like a brick wall. That's my favorite. Uh, G Raft, and that was manned actually by uh, Becky Salisi, who every year ups her ante. Last year or two years ago, she was a clown. She had a big clown thing, and she was a... Um, what do you call the animals? So emotional pet, the support, emotional support. Oh, not yes. emotional support pet. She was yeah. an emotional support clown as a float. <laughs> this year, she was dressed up as a giraffe, a complete whole giraffe, including paper mache. And she was in a big blow up giraffe costume. And she, her thing was called G I G raft. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, kind of we had the proverbial, we went the proverbial politically incorrect. We had Snot Rocket, uh, which was a green <laughs> flat vessel. And then, I don't know why it was flat. Uh, and then we also had, um, my favorite was Witch Tester. 
<laughs> which I did not understand until I saw the writing on the side of it that said, no, before you burn. <laughs> so you know what that uh, refers to? Yeah, yeah, the, the witch, the Salem witch trials. You had to, they had to float before you could burn them. <laughs> exactly, one of the tests for witches back in the 1600s is they would bind you, they would bind you, they would strip you down to your undergarments, bind you and throw you in the water with a long lead and see if you floated or not, because they believed that if you were baptized, then if you weren't baptized, the water would repel from you. So therefore you'd float to the surface. So you either drown or burn. That's it's right. No, 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 no. They had the leads so that they, if you sank, they could pull you up, but they really didn't, they didn't really care if they really got you in time. <laughs> that happened to some redheads too, by the way, oh, the devil's oh. children. Oh, oh yeah. we knew that. We knew oh, that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the big things though, the controversies was that Chris Langathionis, I want to call it just two things. Number one, Chris Langathionis is a local, um, you know, guy. We know him well. We love him. Okay. You know, Chris. <laughs> Yeah. So Chris is a four-time winner. Ooh. And he always has a boat that is with Kim Kim Jong. Kim Jong un, Kim Jong il, Kim Jong, whatever. And this year it was King Kim Jong four. So it was four for the fourth, right? So he was pitted up against a guy dressed up as Evil Knievel, who was a newcomer. He was literally Evil Knievel, head to toe. And Evil Knievel, as Chris Langantheos was going around the buoy, he veered off. Evil Knievel did and T-boned him oh. <laughs> and sank him. So that was the strategy. So it was very controversial. Burn him. He sank. Burn him. And then the other thing I want to do is point out is the Patel family, which they're awesome. They're yeah. these two girls, they're sisters. They look like twins because they're almost identical, but they're not. One is older. <laughs> and their father they really get into it and they oh they had three out of the like 14 or 15 oh. things and he did his last minute hopefully i imagine because he helped his daughters but he had a last minute entry and his was called tv box <laughs> <laughs> anyway there you go that that's enough talk about that and by the way here's the other reason to come to the cardboard regatta next year besides the fact that it's raucous fun awesome and just really good for me I'm Chelsea, signing up right now is that you can go early and the american legion which is right next door because this takes place in the public dock launch the public launch behind town hall mm -hmm. right next door is the american legion they put out a huge spread for a brunch highly fortified if you know what i mean yeah 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 that's <laughs> erica really no rhyme or reason to why they do this no, I think these were just buddies. Actually, I do know that the the players, Bob Hofelt and his wife, and and their and the Solaces, like Brian Solacy and Chris Langathionis, all three of them I happen to know were like regulars at Seven Central for like trivia night. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it came out of there. Yeah. Huh. yeah. The best ideas. Yes. All right. Awesome pictures uh, to go along with that story too. So check that out, folks. It's Erica from the Cricket. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.